<laughs> um, I am grateful, grateful, grateful that when you agreed to have this conversation with me. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Andrea St. Louis. I am the owner of Step Into Purpose Consulting, as well as the Tatted Professionals. However, Step Into Purpose Consulting, we focus on coaching, helping you live your best life, helping you, helping you to step out of those comfort zones, um, leave that fear behind. And I have been talking a lot about friendship lately. I've been on my own personal friendship journey. And as I'm on that journey, um, I have invited others to come along with me. And so I've decided that I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. And so I started this series called the Step Into Friendship Conversation Series. And Whitney so kindly agreed to be my first guest um, for the, these conversations. And so today I think we're having a very important one. It is the month of September, which is also Suicide Prevention Month. Um, and so I am excited to have someone who knows a lot about this topic um, with us. Um, Whitney Dodds, it, L, let me make sure I get it right. It's <laughs> LMHC, LPC, is the founder and CEO of Wellness for the Culture, LLC, which is a mental health practice right here in Springfield, Massachusetts, that specializes in serving um, underserved communities, black and brown communities. They're serving our people. They're right where we need them to be um, in downtown Springfield. And we're grateful for her and all that she does. She is also the founder of the One Day You Will Live Scholarship Fund. And so they provide support to college students who have dealt with issues of depression and uh, suicidal ideation and provide not just financial support for their studies, but also um, make sure that they to make sure that they have access to mental health care during their time in school. And so Whitney is she does so much more than that, but we're gonna stop there for now because I really want us to hear from her. I know she has some very important things to share with us. If you think of any questions that you'd like to ask, please feel free to drop it in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Um, so go ahead and do that. But other than that, Whitney, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm excited to have you. Thank you, thank you. Um, I always get excited when people um, introduce me. I'm like, oh, you're talking about me? That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah, so I am excited to uh, talk about this. Friendship is such an important uh, conversation. Um, I also love digging into conversations that people are like, I don't even know how to start that conversation. Um, I don't even know where to begin. How can I do better? Um, especially when it comes to conversations like friendship. I think we all are learning, especially at our age, how to do friendship over, how to you know, maintain relationships and what that looks like. We're redefining that as women where, um, you know, as we were younger, we put all our energy and effort into, you know, romantic relationships or intimate partner relationships, as opposed to, you know, nurturing and fostering our actual friendships, you know, that, that come around us and support us in so many ways. And so when it comes to mental health and suicide, and I think a lot of the reasons why our relationships with our friendships uh, don't work is a lot of times mental health issues, whether it's poor communication, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, it's it's lack of you know social skills. It, there's so many other things that are barriers. It's trauma, right? Yeah. It, it, there's always something, right? And we don't understand how those things play roles in our relationships. So until we do obviously the work, it's just what I always say, you're going to be stifled and hindered. That, that's absolutely correct. Um, I have realized over this, especially this last, <laughs> this last almost two years now, right? Um, how, just how important community is, even when you can't physically be with one another, like it is necessary. These relationships, this support is essential, right? Um, and so I, you know, I, now that I want to jump into the questions really fast, but I think one of the things that I think we'd like to hear is how has this last year, two years impacted folks in, in, in terms of, um, you know, looking at suicidal ideation, looking at depression, looking at of those things, because we all know that it's had an impact on all of us, right? And it hasn't impacted all of us the same way, but it has, it has had, and COVID has had an impact on all of us. Yeah. So I think I will speak for like the whole mental health community to say it is very bipolar, for lack of better words. Um, <laughs> it is either one, an extreme of relief because people who have, you know, 
very low social meters, get to stay inside, have that excuse without feeling the guilt and like, ah, COVID, sorry, can't go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, darn. Um, and so that that guilt or that overdoing that that need to be everywhere all the time. And, and so what that has done for those types of people is giving them time to breathe. Right. I don't have to do these things to come back and restructure how they are in their everyday lives. And then there are people because we do need connection. They are struggling. They are struggling because they need to go outside. They need to be around people. Their energies are, you know, contingent on whatever someone else is also feeding them so for those people it might have been very hard and we saw people that resort to in their houses go deeper into a depressive state um but i think what was most beautiful about 2020 and this year is this excuse my kids <laughs> um, what was the best about this year was watching marginalized communities watching black and brown people say i need help and and we're like yes finally let's do this um and and i have seen some amazing recoveries new starts new mindsets and thought processes like i have seen some beautiful things from it so it really went a lot of different ways i know um when we're talking about youth um and children the same thing goes. Kids are bullied. They're worried about what they're going to wear to school, or they made that mistake that one day that lasted them three months to get over. Like, you know, I was failing in school and I'm not really an out loud type of person. I'm really shy. And so I get to be on a computer now. Like, whoa, like that's, and some of them flourished, right? They didn't have to do those terrible social like things, like especially middle schoolers, poor middle schoolers. Um, or Again, if you needed to get out of your house because maybe you didn't have the best home situation, right? Maybe you needed to go and be around your peers or you feed off of other things and have that social. So again, even for them, yeah. um, saw how mental health impacted our relationships and again. our, yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's a, it's a brand new dynamic, right? With having kids having been home virtual for so long. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's not only the pressure on the kids. And so you, especially when you're talking about middle schoolers and all these adjustment moments that should have happened that just didn't for a lot of people. Uh, my kindergartner did, well, he's a first grader now, but he did kindergarten at a new school. He ended his old school online and started a new school online, you know, and now he's in a whole new grade. And so that adjustment period, like we were a little nervous at first, we're like, he's going to be like, where are my naps? <laughs> where's, where's the time when I get to go sleep? Like that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and so I can only imagine as you know, you're talking about preteens and teenagers, and even college students that it was a very different dynamic now being stuck at home. Like, especially like I remember I lived on campus. I, I live, I didn't live far from my school, but I lived on campus. I loved my family, but I lived on campus, right? And to think that now you have to be back at home, that impact, um, it, it's having an effect. It's having an effect. And so we wanted to talk about, we, we want to talk about, well, first I want to let you, you know, share a little bit with us um, things that we should know when it comes to talking about suicide, suicidal ideation. I know like it's a morbid topic for folks, but I think that especially in the environment we're in right now, we need to be talking about it. People need to know they're not alone um, and they need to know that someone cares. And then I wanna talk about, you know, how, to, how, does that, how does friendship play a part in there? Yeah. So I think just how you say, like, I love when you, you even came to me, it's like, I don't even know how we're gonna start this conversation or where we're gonna go, but I know it's a topic that needs to be talked about. I think that is the most important step is, I don't know how to address this, but something ain't right. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but what's up? What do you need? And just like talking about it in any different context, even if it doesn't belong in that context, ask the questions, start the conversation. Um, something we learn in school is that, you know, you have to make it very plain. Like somebody comes in and says, like you might make this be vague statement, vague statements, I mean, and it's kind of like uh, you don't want to say the thing and we tiptoe around the thing right and in the black community we get all scared and panicky and then we like you know 
chastise the person who's you know feeling all these streaming emotions and things like that um we, we don't have to get into the, the 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 that part of it but but there's so many things around like these layers around it that peeling it back is something that kind of just you just need to start it doesn't matter if you have the right words you read i mean anything else we want to do we get on the internet and we google it right we just mm, what this is mm, i'm always crying all the time i wonder what this is about mm, i'm always angry and irritable and like screaming at everybody or man I, I used to love to cook i don't even i don't remember the last time i cooked right like when's the last time i brushed my teeth or washed my hair like people don't notice those things right um and and that's not that might not even be something somebody on the outside might notice right? Because high functioning people with depression and suicidal ideation woo, woo, are we great at this, okay? Yes. Great. <laughs> so um, I can definitely talk about different ways to check in, to notice, to um, even notice in your own body, um, because also in doing this work is I have the lived experience. Um, so how I utilize my friends, how I didn't before, um, I can, we could do, we could go right into it. I'm very transparent. And so, um, you know, ask away. Let's just, yeah, have- sure. So I, obviously I titled this, like we were friends, but I had no idea. Um, I think growing up, I remember being in high school and I think high school was the first time that I really experienced, like it was at night I, to put a benchmark on it. I graduated 2003 from high school. Um, and so a lot of things happened. 9-11 happened while I was in high school. All of these things happened. Um, so it was a rough, another rough patch, right? And and so there were these string of like suicides that you were hearing about. And the conversation really was like focused more so on the families, focused on their friends at school. And I think the thing that everyone was wrestling with is like, I was friends with this person and I just feel like I had no idea anything was wrong. Mm. Um, and so um, having lived through that experience, so you said that you, you um, walk through this piece of your journey differently with your friends now than you did before. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience before and what that felt like for you? Because sometimes, and and so, and that's why I think I was kind of careful. Like when I reached down, I was like, I don't even know how to ask these questions because I think sometimes when we talk about suicide, we make it about the people left behind and we don't consider what the pe- person who is either dealing with suicidal ideation or depression or the person who committed suicide, we're not really focused on what they were experiencing that brought them there um, and, and how they felt. Um, like, did they feel like they could reach out? Did they feel like they could talk to anyone? So talk to us. Those are great questions. Um, so before let's just, we're going to talk about like the, the layers around it. I was raised as the oldest child of a lot of children. Um, and I have a significant trauma past. So being the survivor was my narrative right? I had to be epic so that the people that saw me could be like, wow, you, you're that human, right? You did that. And my siblings could look up to me and say, wow, I can do this too. So just that, right? And then I didn't necessarily have the best parental support um, going through school and I had a relationship that just got a little rocky and it, and like it just I was holding everything but the the reason why I couldn't be transparent w- with anybody was one I didn't know what in the world was going on with me that's number one number two I think what I attempted to do was pray it away <laughs> and not because the people around me I, I I won't say that I had that experience where the people around me were like you're not you know saved if you're do the you know I didn't have those people but I didn't know what it was and so all I kept saying was like you know I'm really sad and like you know I'm out of here and I'm like I don't care about this anymore but I would walk around everyone and I would hang out I would I mean I went to UMass so I would party I would I would do all the things, but as soon as I shut my door, 
done. The lights off, the, you know, peels off, phones off. I don't, I'm in the dark. Like it was cry, like crying fits that just could not stop. It was all these things, but I was like, what in the world is wrong with me? And then finally I said, okay, let's go find a therapist. I went to the, you know, the services at school. Um, as soon as I said PT, uh, a significant trauma history, she was like, eek, um, <laughs> you might need more than six sessions. Um, and so referred me to someone in town. I then went to someone in town and then they said, you know, after lots and lots of questions, like, hmm, you sound like you have late onset post-traumatic stress disorder. And I'm thinking, ain't that for like veterans? Ain't that for like people who like get into car accidents? Isn't that for like, and she's like, no, it's for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I don't know what that means. And then we then eventually started on medication and I had started and that was a whole different thing because there's some serious stigma around that. And I didn't want to tell nobody about that nonsense. Um, so uh, still out and about doing all the stuff, suffering in silence, not saying a word to nobody. Um, and I think I'm going to give the tell. People are not going to be happy about the tell. The way I tricked everybody is I still had a sense of humor. It was very dark though. If people, and only another person who has this experience can tell and read right under the line of all your dark humor. Um, it'd be like, yeah, but like, you know, we all die someday or like, you know, who cares? Like uh, YOLO or like a person who's like extremely reckless, doesn't care about anything. And like, you're like, Ooh, they're just having a good time. And it's like, no, because they're really just, if they die, I, so oof, you lost me. Am I back? Yes, okay. you're back. <laughs> See, that's the, the camera on my phone is amazing, but not on my laptop. And so, Paul, oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> Keep going. This is good. Well, where, where was I at? Where was I at? So, um, that, that's the tell the, the very dark humor that people are kind of like ha, 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 ha. but all the time I thought it would be a burden on people because people have their own problems I thought that I could handle it by myself um I should be able to handle this by myself I'm doing all the right things I'm doing what I'm supposed to do I'm taking the medicine I'm going to the therapist and she, oof, she had me going through this trauma stuff and no, no, no. <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, but my world around me. And so if you know that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right, and you need to be safe in your environment and yeah. to be to get to even the root of some of these terrible things that were all of a sudden happening to me, I didn't have the safe around mm. me either. Wow. So that was problematic. Um, but I think it was me saying. No, I got it though. I'm okay. I'm good. Like, yeah, it's a little like people, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Yes, you know, I'm good. I'm really good. I got this thing, da, 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 this, that, and the third. Nobody would know. Really good. Really good at it. So that's how other people are. But then there's some people who tell you, or, okay. <laughs> One time I tried it out, right? Somebody goes, hey, how are you? Actually, I'm not really doing well. Um, mm -hmm. I had a really bad day. Um, I don't feel safe. And then and it was just like, oh no. And then that was the end of the conversation. Because wow. generally ask you, how are you? They don't really want you to tell them that part. And because we know that, that some people don't know how to respond to it, you right. really don't want anyone to say the wrong thing. Um, you don't want to be the burden. You won't want to be the bad guy. You don't want to be all these other things. So you, you don't say anything. Um, so it was like, I even tricked my therapist. Like she was like, you know, safety meeting after each one. Cause she was like, okay, are we feeling hopelessness? And I'm like, yeah, because like, you know, if, you know, God decided to take me back today, I'd be all right. And that's kind of how I went. And she was like, yeah, but you wouldn't try to meet him any sooner. And I'm like, no, oh, I'm good. I would never do that. Um, <laughs> I would never do that. And I kept saying, oh, I would never do that. I would never do that. I would never do that. And then the other shoe dropped. Wow. 
and I did do that. Um, that's when everybody was like, what, how, you? <laughs> Not you. And yeah, like, that was gonna be my next question. Like, how did, how did your circle respond? How did your people respond when they became aware of exactly how things were? Yeah, how bad things were. So I think there were maybe two people who had insight into how, just how bad I was doing. Um, ooh, going back to this moment. So give me a second. <laughs> Um, they were very upset, um, and hurt because they had kept me up on the phone. I want to say they kept me up. I spent hours on the phone with one person. I spent hours on the phone with the next person. And they were like, you're good. Are you good? I will stay on the phone. Are you good? Um, and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to go to sleep. Just, I just want to go to sleep. And nobody, again, if you are in the state, you understand what somebody says, I just want to go to sleep means. And so I always interpret that now because it's like, ha ha, you can't trick me. <laughs> right, right. What do you mean by you just want to go to sleep? Do you mean that you just want to go to sleep and never wake up again? Um, tell me more about that thought you have. Um, and so I, I said that I just want to go to sleep. And obviously it's like two in the morning. They're going to assume I just want to go to sleep. Yeah. So I I go to sleep, but I can't sleep and all these other things. And then I take my sleeping pills. So, and then I go to sleep. Um, their response though was two is, if you would have told me to come over, I would have come over. If you would have told me, I will tell you right now, a person that is struggling this bad doesn't have it in them to tell you. Or a person that has a lot of pride like me, I don't have it in me to tell you. Sis, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. I, I mean, I recently experienced like a, a very difficult season and there were people who were like, you know, they had, they had no idea. Like maybe some, some people might be like, oh, maybe she seems, she seems a little down, but you know, nothing out of the ordinary. And then it was, then it was like, um, you know, after I, of course, this is after I start therapy and all of this, that and I can finally, I'm finally finding some words to express what's happening. Um, and they're like, you know, they, they, they can't imagine how lonely that felt. And, and for me, that felt like validating versus that whole, if you would have told me, it's, it's like when, you know, I recently had someone uh, close to me pass, uh, pass away. And so of course I'm reaching out, my godfather passed away. And so I was, you know, reaching out to my, my godmother and her family. And the, the thing is like, if you need anything, let me know. Oh, Odds are that person who's going through something is not going to call you to let you know. But if you offer yourself and you show up at my doorstep, I'm not, I'm likely not going to turn you away. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you also hit on something else really, really important. And I've, I've said it for years and I truly believe it. Like I will send, and you might notice this sometimes where I'll say, Hey, Wendy, especially if it's been a few days and we haven't, you know, I haven't heard from you or we hadn't, you know, talked or anything. I'll say, Hey, Whitney, how are you? And I wait before I start saying Absolutely. what I need to say, I wait for a response and not everyone will take advantage of that. Not everyone will actually give a, you know, a real response, but I intentionally don't send the rest of my message until I get a response to how are you? Because what if I'm like ready to vent and you already have a lot on your plate, you already dealing with a whole lot. And now I'm just. And that's, and that's a great question. That's a, that's a, a space. I think one, my best friend is great at this now. She's like, hey, and we, we both do it. Do you have space for me? You, you good? Because I'm, I, I need to like, bleh. <laughs> and, and, we're, and if I'm like, okay, I can hold the space with you, but I can't, like, I'm not mentally with you right now. And sometimes it's like, I'm going to come over and sit on this couch. You're going to sit on your couch. We're going to watch this TV, but neither of us are going to say a thing because I can't hold it and you can't hold it. But being across from you in this moment is very helpful. Or I'm melting to pieces. You get that. And so we're just going to play cards. Um, and so that is the, also the language of like the people who can't necessarily talk in those moments, who will not, you 
oh, if you need it, just ask me. Unfortunately, I have tried with everything in me. It does not work for me. You would have, oh, and I have those friends too now. And next thing you know, they're showing up. Hey, I'm just here. And I'm like, oh, and then next thing they're, they're washing my dishes. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're folding my laundry. And at this point, I don't stop them because I don't even have the energy to fight them. But if you let me mask myself, I will mask myself. Mm -hmm. So you have to step in that. And again, should you not have the capacity to do so, I understand. Because yeah. that's, yeah. right? And that's, again, I will say that comes up to friendship, right? Is what can you handle? What can't you handle? Um, also, is the person you're in that relationship with doing the work also because that's a lot for a person to take on when they're not doing the work that they should also be doing I can't do more work than you can I can't make you want to live if you don't I think that's a lot of people's um sadness that's the first thing they say one like you said what could I have done differently um two it is you know, I wish I could have done more. Um, is it my, it's my fault or, you know, um, I don't know how often this is. It's like they're selfish and this, that, and the third. Um, I think we're all selfish at this point because you made crying about you, but that, you know, that's none of my business. Yeah, no, you're right. But you, 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 and you hit on a, a very important this is a friendship concept and I, I kind of talked about it with my friend Whitney and Ashley when I did um, the conversation on surrendering your friendships but being honest about your capacity like it's okay baby to say that it's too hot in the kitchen I must get out <laughs> okay right if you can't handle the heat right and yeah. being honest about that and there are there are honest ways because I think when when I've been in in hard spaces I felt more cared for by a friend who said, you know, Andrea, I know you probably really need to talk right now. I don't have the, the capacity for it. Then you just didn't answer my text message. Mm -hmm. Just didn't answer my phone call. You just disappeared. Right. right? I think right. it's better to tell someone, you know, I, I want to be there for you, but right now I'm not in the best position to do that. Or, um, I'd love to talk, but I can't focus on that right now. The person at least knows you are there. Yep. Yes. You are there. The other thing is that I think sometimes we don't, um, with that, how are you? We don't wait for an answer because we don't necessarily know what to say if they really tell me what's going on. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do I do if they do drop that bomb on me? How do I even respond? A lot of times is I didn't even know what to say. And that, that is the part where I say, this is where I think at, at two places, right? I don't even know how to respond if you said that to me. I don't know how I'm going to respond if you respond stupid. <laughs> like, like, so let's just leave this up in this cloud up in the air and like maneuver around it. Um, I'll say that I am guilty of just talking to people. I, but that is also part of me who like I cannot tolerate small talk. Um, I do care how you are if it gets there, but I also know that people, they gonna tell me how they are regardless. <laughs> right. Cause, right. Cause and so I already understand that. And so that's my boundary is like, okay, do I want to play therapist right now? Or do I just have, need to have a need met? Like, <laughs> um, and, But being honest, that honesty, I think is so important. And even as we're talking about, um, you know, suicide and depression, like the thing is, it's unfair to expect someone who's experiencing something, who's going through something difficult that already has like locked down their ability to really process on their own. Um, it's unfair for them to ask them to then also somehow gauge your capacity. Like you have to be honest. You can't expect them to be honest with you about what's happening with them if you won't take the step of being honest with them about what's happening with you. Say that. Say that. So I do, I know how um, there's certain people who will like, how are you? Just checking in on you. Those people, I don't lie to. <laughs> right, right. You just tell them, you just say it. Like, gonna sound they, so <laughs> there's people who's like, I know that like you're the 
the person people come to for healing, but I'm doing the check on my strong friend type checking with you now. And so I can hold the space and then I just go ahead and, you know, you know, that that commercial is like they zip and everything falls out. And then I can do that with them. And there's certain people I have let in as of recent because that's part of friendship. Um, I have let in and allowed these relationships because I understand that they were sent to me because I needed them. And so to utilize them in spaces where people can actually hold space like I can, because that's also hard in the profession I'm in and what I do naturally. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other question, so I, I know I sent you some questions, so let's actually get to those. Um, as a friend, right, let's say I am here, I am trying to do my best, so I'm willing to wait for the response to the how are you. I don't really know what's, what to do after that, right? I don't know what's going to happen if she tells me what's going on, right, or he tells me what's going on. Are there signs that we can look out for when a friend might need support or might be in trouble? Like, is, is that a thing? Like, what does it look like? Because I know that's not true for every case and everybody's different, but it, are there any, any signs? Yeah. So I think prior to the depression, right? The stage that hit me, knocked me out. My friends know who I am. The people around me, I was, you know, I was all over the place. Happy, go lucky. My grades were great. Like, I, I mean, the vibrant person that I was, um, no, it's okay. I don't want to go there. Oh, okay. I'm only wearing sweatpants every day. Like if you see me in sweatpants and sneakers every day, not every day. Cause you know, when I'm cute, I'm cute in my sweatpants and sneakers, but there's if, or, you know, I am haven't been out or if I'm not on, like one of my friends was like, mm, I didn't see you posting in a few days. And I'm like, dang, mind your business. <laughs> I figured you was just taking a break, but I'm just in case you're not taking a break. Are you good? And so I think sometimes it's even just saying what you notice. Hey, I'm noticing you're not really an irritable person. You are, you snapped on me the other day and sis, like, that's not even like you. What's up? So it doesn't have to be all in the thing, but if you're noticing something, but, and, and that's the thing about being in a relationship with someone, you got to be paying attention. Like, it, it, are you really in relationship with that other person? If you can't tell when something is off, um, well, you're all like, I don't know what this is, but like, and, and that's the other part is again, not making something about you. You snapped on me. I did not like how that felt. And we can talk about it. What made you snap on me? What was that about? What I got this, this feeling against like, what's this, what's this in between? But then so a lot of people don't have those good communication skills. You don't have the relationship. You have not fostered the relationship to be able to ask certain questions like that. Ooh, right. what's in the air? We try to ignore it. We try to gloss over it. No, there's something there. What's what's happening? Most a lot of times people are like, well, yeah, you're right. I was going through this, 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 and this, and I didn't like what you said about this and this, that, and and, and like, but most times it's something else that is underlying, but we never we yes, gloss that underlying thing. Yeah. 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 Um and so really, I think that the, what I'm hearing you say um, is that we have to be willing to embrace some honesty, like, oh, you're acting funky and I need to find out what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. we need curious, we need to have some curiosity, like, okay, Absolutely. The vibe is different. You, your, your outfit's interesting right now, not the usual, right? With What's up with your edges ain't popping like <laughs> you know so like no help us to understand um and then some humility right and realize that I don't like the way you're talking like I don't like the way you're behaving right now but I can see that something bigger than me is happening right now Absolutely. and so I'm gonna we're gonna talk about this but I'm gonna set it aside for the moment because you seem like you might need a little bit of loving right now huh and that 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 is I want to say that's like the epitome of the friendship. Like, ooh, okay, all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you a minute and I'm gonna come back. Um, because sometimes we just need that grace. Um, because when we do come down, when we do come down, the worst thing in the world to do to a person that is struggling with suicidal ideation and depression is to make them apologize to you. We are enough on our own. 
And I will say, there are people who are, are not aware of what they're going through yet. So extend the grace. Um, the people who are doing the work and it is hard work. And so we are not going to be perfect immediately. Extend the grace. Yeah. I don't, you had a party. I, you know what? I don't know how much I say these things. Like I say them. I am very vocal about my issues and people are like, yes, we admire you. And then I'd be like, I can't come to this event, um, you know, da, 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 da. And they're like, oh, no, dang, why? Oh, and I'm like, there's nothing, do y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have to explain, I don't have the capacity to do that. I need to be inside this weekend. I need to be in a blanket and, and like bring it on in. I need to do some radical self-care because I, if I keep going, it doesn't work that well. I don't function this well. And it is, sometimes it doesn't matter because again, like you said, people are so like in themselves that they cannot see past that, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, that's really it. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. human understanding that everything in about you and being curious, asking questions. Hey, I, like even the, po the person online, hey, I see you posting online. What's that about? I usually, if I see somebody go deep dark online, I'm first in the inbox. I'm first on the phone with the side eyes. What's happening? What's up? You know what's funny uh, that I was, I'm sitting here thinking about um, is I'll, I'll never forget. So like, I know that, and like, I've taken them before for other stuff. Um, you take them at your, your, when you go to your annual physical or whatever, they ask you to, you know, those questions about your life, how you're feeling about your life. They want you to give it a rating. And normally I'm like, oh, everything's good. Everything's in the good or better category. Right. And then I, I don't know that I even realized how serious uh, things had gotten for me mentally and emotionally until my therapist started going through and asking me the questions. I was like, Andrea, something might actually be wrong <laughs> because these ratings are not, you know, and, and for some people it takes, and so I'm not saying that anyone needs to go out and try and be a therapist, but maybe if you have three solid questions that you're comfortable asking your friend, you know, like, okay, tell me how you feel about the kids right now. Mm. How you feel about these dishes in the sink right now? <laughs> Right, like because it, it and it, it might sound funny, but especially when you don't know what to say, starting somewhere is better than not saying anything at all. Mm -hmm. I think if you know your friend, if you know what their tells are, if you know like ooh, but and so again, some people are like, I didn't even talk to that friend for like three weeks and didn't even ask, didn't even, you know. But that I think knowing who's around you and I um. I love that, that, that line of questioning. Um, if I, a lot of times you'll notice if you're connected with someone, you'll feel something. I, I don't like, again, that idea that we're all connected. This is, it is what it is. And so to feel like, mm, where are you at? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's an ask very vague question. What's up? It's in the eyes. Mm, I feel you. What's going on? All these good things. Um, which is very funny because the person I just checked on earlier and I said, mm, where you at? Just text me. <laughs> Good. Yay. I'm glad they texted you back. Where um, you at? Next, the, the, the other question I wanted to ask is what are some of the everyday ways that we can show up for our friends? Now let's, now we know that this is where they are, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what are some everyday ways that we can show up for our friends on their mental health journeys? It, even as we, and, and as well as how can we ask or how can we empower our circle to show up for us? I believe, I believe in friendship being two way street. I know that when we're in hard times that we often don't have the language for what we're experiencing. But when you come out of that moment, when you're having, a, when I feel like the, how, how I feel now, I feel great, things are good. I think it's my responsibility during these times to empower my circle with the language, with the, with the keys to when I get locked inside myself again, to open the door, right? Um, so what are some of those everyday ways that we can show up for our friends, um, you know, that aren't, that aren't like trying to, I'm not trying to be a therapist. I'm not trying to be invasive in your, your process, but just. What do you need? That is the number one question. After I say, I'm not safe. I don't feel good. 
that's generally what I would say to my friends. How are you? I don't feel good. They understand immediately what that means. I don't feel good. Because if I was sick, I'd say, I'm sick. Oh, my stomach hurts. I'm nauseous. I don't feel good means my way of saying, it ain't it. Um, I could, the, you know, the world could kick rocks. <laughs> like, I'm all set. Or I will say, I'm all set. Um, so, and then the next response is, what do you need? Not I'm coming over immediately. Oh, talk to me and pull your heart out to me. Or, you know, did you talk to your therapist? Did you take your meds today? And, what, and, and I didn't, you add in, I'm going to ignore you, like relax. Or trying to tell me about a time. Or, see, I'm not, I ain't with it. But that's me. Again, if you're asking what someone needs, then you are giving the power back to them in their hands also to say, you have a choice. You, what do you need? How do I help? Where do I fit in? Sometimes it's like, I need to go get some ice cream. Um, I need to come sit on the couch next to you and watch TV about nothing. I need to take a drive. I need, like there's people, I need to talk. Sometimes people just need to have it out. Um, I need you to share space with me. Um, I just pray with me, like put it back in their hands. Sometimes I say, I don't know what I need. Okay. You know, it, what is it that, you, you know, you can, is it okay that I suggest some things? Do you mind if I, I ask like you to come over? Um, I think one of my friends after I had uh, the miscarriage says, um, she said to me, I don't know, you know, how I felt was, is I didn't want anyone to say anything to me after. I just kind of wanted to be in my space and I didn't want to hear someone say the wrong thing. And I didn't want to hear, you know, any silver lining things. And so I did not want anyone to talk to me in that moment. She said, but I understand that that's not the same for everybody. She said, do you mind if I check on you daily? Do you, how do you, do I check on you once a week? Do I check on you every other week? How do I check in with you? Um, do I call you? Do I text you? And I was like, yeah, you onto something. <laughs> you're, on, you're onto something. She I went, love that. Oh, do you want to just reach out to me first? Do I expect you to reach out to me and me to just be available to you? Um, or can I check in on you? And I was like, I tell you right now, I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> you should probably check in on me. Um, every day probably ain't going to be a good thing for me. I'm all over the place. Okay. Um, and so I do. And it's nice, like every other week or every week or so when I get that text message like, hey, thinking about you, you want to talk? We good. You want to set a time to talk? Maybe tonight's not a good night. And it, it is, it is really nice. It is. Um, because again, as I said it, I said what I needed. I, and, and you listened. A lot of times you, like you said, it is lonely in this place. You feel isolated. You feel like the burden. You don't want to put something onto someone else. And so when someone asks you for that space with you, it feels like love. Feels like love. It, it, it means that you're seen because I think yeah. a lot of people visible when they begin to experience mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because I and, and I I know like folks, sometimes when you don't know how to deal with the dark cloud, you can see the dark cloud following them. Like you like, we just don't pretend we don't see the dark cloud. Just, that's what mm -hmm. But then the person without realizing the person begins to feel invisible. And now by asking this question, I love, love, love the, do you mind if I check on you? How often can I check on you? Can I check on you once a week? Like, I love that. By setting those expectations, if you disappear, we know where to find you, <laughs> right? That's, that's amazing. That's, that's what it looks like to equip your circle with the tools to help you grow. Yeah. Oh, it, there's another, uh, one of my friends who literally says, I'm not going to tell you, you have to ask me the questions. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> because I'm, I'm the same way. Like I'm with this individual, I can like word vomit. But then the thing is, is this person at the same time will let me word vomit, but never say if they had the capacity to take it on. So now my question is, you good before I go off? Cause I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. Or, um, for me, it's like, I need five minutes. I can't stay in this space 
longer than five minutes. So I'm going to do this thing for five minutes. I cry, like kick and scream, like hate the world, hate it here, stupid, F these kids, F this. <laughs> all of it. And then she goes, it's five minutes. <sighs> okay. <laughs> all right. I think that's that's a beautiful next uh, point um, as far as friends go is not letting your friend. Now, there are things that you can't control. So right. whether it's, you know, they, they have to um, manage, do they have to do the work in therapy, they're taking medication. Those are things that you can't control. You can encourage them to do what they need to show yeah. appointments, take their medication. You can't control that. You're not responsible for that as their friend. But I do think that one of the things that you just shared is not letting your friends stay there, especially if they're at a point that's not, it's not so far that they, they're like beyond your capacity. Um, yeah. You can pull them back. Like, you know what? I think you should just scream for these next five, 10 minutes. And then we're going to, then we're going to hang out. We're going to go get some food. We're yeah. Gonna- let's. So I have gotten like, I'm going to get lunch. We're going to get lunch. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Um, you home? What's up? You good? Um, or like, if I do say I am not, I ain't good. Uh, but I don't want to be bothered. Mm, no. Mm-mm. I'll come even if I just have to sit at the end of the, the you know the couch and floor. we're just gonna sit here together um because again that lonely that isolation that yeah that's I, I understand and maybe you don't need to talk but let's just walk right right let's get out of the house yeah. um let's just cook I'll, I'm gonna bring over food you hungry yeah and let me just clarify for anyone who may be watching this now or you're watching it later on um, and you're like, well, you know, I'm not a therapist. Well, you know, suicide is more complicated than that. I, I agree. These are all very complex, uh, very deep topics. However, one of the things that I'm finding as I'm going on this friendship journey is that a lot of us don't even try because we don't know where to start. And so what I'm trying to do is to empower us as friends. Like we want good friends, but we need to be good friends as well. And so- yeah. One of the ways that you become a good friend is showing up in these everyday ways for your friends, even if they are struggling with something deep, something dark, something that you're, you don't necessarily feel equipped to handle. Um, nothing is like being left alone when you're lifting the heaviest weight you've ever held. Ooh, That's hey. why they have spotters in the gym. You're your friend <laughs> spotter today. Exactly. Love it. You may not be able to put up that weight yourself, but you can at least make sure it doesn't fall on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that that is a a beautiful thing. I I just I don't maybe I, oh let's talk about advice. Yes, there we yep yep. <laughs> don't do it, sis. <laughs> there it is. There's don't there it do is. it. Don't, don't do it. Do it unless you are asked. Like don't. It, it is the the most important question is. And even in in therapy, when I'm when I'm counseling right is I generally the people who know me knows I'm gonna tell a story at some point now what you take from the story is yours <laughs> and that's how I put it I'm making no suggestion no you should have or you could or you and or I might say you know when I'm feeling a, a certain way these things help me you you again Take what you, you know, cherry pick. If you like one of the things I said, use it. If you don't, okay. But I'm not, well, you need to do this thing or, you know, you should because the first thing someone is going to do is shut down, close you out. Now you've pissed them off. Now they want you out the house. You didn't do anything. You just made worse. Your advice says that for you, this thing works. Your advice says you know more about their experience than they do. That is not helpful. It's, it's almost as if you're trying to pull them into your world instead of you joining them in there. Yeah, you should just, or just, ooh, just. That's a word, I'm just gonna say that. Um, just is just, a word that should be thrown away anyway. <laughs> or it's, it's easy or simple. Ooh, ableist. Also, we could talk about ableism in the mental health world. 
I can't do the things you can do. It's like when you say you should just to me when in, in around something mental, you are saying to a person sitting in a wheelchair, you should just get up and walk. It's easy. Just stand up. So we had, should have a lot more conversations about ableism and mental health and how you need to monitor the things you're saying. If you don't know what to say, shut up. Yeah. I don't know what to say. It's okay. It's okay to say, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't want to be more harmful, but I'm here. I'm, I'm right here, here and I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere, but I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. It's better. Yeah, it's, it's far better. It's far better. So we are almost at eight o'clock, but I want, and I want to make sure you get a couple of minutes to talk about the one day you will live scholarship as sure. well as well as your services in case anybody's trying to uh, reach out to you. Um, but I wanted to ask one more question. This one's a kind of a, a heavy one, right? Um, what would you say to someone right now who's having a hard time because they didn't realize that their friend was suffering or their friend was in trouble and mm -hmm. they passed away, they're dealing with that, that guilt. And again, I, I, I recognize that part of this is we moving it away from making it about us, but the fact of the matter is that we're still here and we're still carrying that. Yeah. Right, that I, I, I would say um, to that person, especially if you have someone like me, there ain't nothing you could do. <laughs> if I have made up my mind, baby, I have made up my mind. Um, and that's any, that's in anything I do. So if you know who I am, there's nothing you really could say at the end of the day, if I choose this thing and I'm choosing this thing and you could have been the most amazing human in the world at that point. Also, I don't, if I don't have the will to live for myself, I don't have the will to live for you or anyone else. And I considered everything else and I still decided I did not want to be here. That's a deep, dark hole. You alone cannot do that either. That other person has to be in the ring with you. So no, it, it is not your fault. There, now we have talked about the ways in which we could be friends. If you were that friend and you utilized all the things you could do, like I said, I had two people that I, were, I was on the phone with, right? And they were in the middle of the night with me. I was woohoo weeping, broken. It, I mean, all the things. And the next morning, you know, they got this phone call or this, you know, this thing. And I, I get it, right? And I'm sure they were like, what? What? Right? Um, but the truth is, is you, you've done it. You did. And like, you did the best you could. So when someone takes their life, it really is not about you. You are left with your feelings and your feelings are valid. It is going to hurt you. You are going to feel like it is your fault. It's not, unless you're a horrible human being. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's just kind of what I want to say to that person. If you have done everything you could, if within your will you know then you have to grieve like any other person because it there was nothing you could do don't do it alone talk to somebody oh uh, yeah talk, you talk to somebody <laughs> again like we don't need to do this again right you saw the signs learn the signs reach out talk to someone get the help it's it's a deep dark thing to have someone so close to you um leave this world um on their own by their own choice I, there's 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 so many different like layers of it the uh, did they care about me i wasn't enough like all those feelings you need to process you need to go have different conversations um because i can imagine that that is a very deep feeling that i could not sway them I wasn't enough. And that's where that whole, that's a selfish thing. But I think that's, that's grief. 
and is valid and it does need to be processed. Right. Right. Process it in the right places. So before we wrap up, I am going to pray. But before I pray, you go ahead, tell us about the scholarship, tell us about Wellness for the Culture, and then I will go ahead and do that. We are women of faith, and you know that I, my hope is that someone watching this, you will have hope not just for your friendships, but you will have hope for your own life, um, mm -hmm. that you will have hope for the people around you. Don't give up on your friends. I know it looks really, really bad right now, but please, I'm, I'm begging you, don't give up on them because they, you may be the lifeline that keeps them here. Absolutely. Check on the strong friends. <laughs> um, so, Wellness for the Culture, Mental Health, uh, now I've named it an organization because it's got a lot going on. We're busy over here. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the practice downtown, 1365 Main Street, third floor, wellness for the culture, some um, new clinicians. And so we are taking people, our waitlist moves every day, which is um, very, very good. Amazing. Makes me happy. Um, so reach out our web, any of the social medias. I ain't got a Twitter, so let me not say any of them. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram is Wellness for the Culture. Um, go on our webpage, wellnessfortheculture.com. Um, now, the near and dear to my heart is a scholarship that just went live on September 7th. We are taking applications. You can apply right on our website. My favorite thing about this is there's no GPA requirement. There's no age requirement because when we're talking depression and suicide um, ideation, who can maintain a GPA, a GPA when you got a lot going on in your head and maybe you know, you're know you at risk of losing scholarships and everything else? That's not helpful. <laughs> that doesn't say, man, I um, really wanna get up again. No, that's like, forget it. What was the point when I just lost all of my scholarships or I'm starting over and I'm such and such years old, but I can't get no scholarships. So, you know, like, the only requirement is that you have this lived experience. This is for the people who, who got this experience and who is struggling, but has hope for the future. The idea is that one day you will live. It does not look like it right now, but if you keep going, if you continue, um, I was watching a show and he said, don't, um, what did he say? Don't mess up your miracle. Uh, based on your, um, because of your trauma or because of your past. And I was like, ooh, that second chance, that second chance at life is your miracle. Now, the past part, work on that. Leave that there because you're gonna live one day. You have to believe that because otherwise, ain't no point of being here. Make some different changes, make some uh, thought problems patterns so we're accepting donations um on there as well the one day you'll live.com um you can look for us in our gala coming up we have a candlelight vigil on the 24th on the uh, city hall steps um this is for everyone we're gonna talk about the ones we lost you can you know write decorate the bags for your loved ones put the pictures of your loved ones on these bags um, and we're going to light the steps up and, 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 you know, have our moment of silence. This is for people who are struggling. Maybe you need to reach out, but you need an open space because you just don't have the capacity to make the first step somewhere. We're going to have the counselors all around. Maybe you need to just talk somebody on the side. Like, this is what we're, we're out here to do because we don't want to see your name on one of these bags. Okay. That's amazing. That is it. All of our other facts about suicide and black people and and a lot of stuff on our on our web pages and so if any of these things sound like you reach out thank you so so much Whitney <laughs> this has been amazing this has been helpful thank you for sharing how folks can can reach out for a support as well and um the vigil I think that's amazing as well so um congratulations on all of the things that you are doing to help our community move forward where mental health is, is concerned. I think it's so necessary. Well, it's ob obviously necessary, not think. I know it's necessary. <laughs> it is so necessary. So I'm gonna pray really quickly and then we're gonna go. But thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to everyone who was able to watch live or if you're watching later on, I hope that this encourages you. I hope it gives you some starting points. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Please feel free to send us a message. We'd love to talk with you more um, about 
friendship, about um, mental health, we, we'd love to have a conversation. So Father, we just wanna tell you thank you for this time that your daughters have been able to sit and talk about the ways that we can show up for each other. We thank you that you created us for relationship, for connection, for community. And Father, we thank you that you're helping us not to leave anyone behind and not allow ourselves to uh, separate ourselves totally from the ones we love when, when life gets hard. We thank you that you're giving us the words to reach out to someone who might be struggling. And also we thank you for uh, the hope and the encouragement to our own hearts if we are the ones that, strug that are struggling. We thank you that even now someone's heart has been uh, pierced about that person they haven't reached out to in a while because it didn't seem like anything was changing. We thank you that you allowed us to see today the value of just showing up just being there even when we don't have the words. And so we ask that you help us not just to be uh, better friends, not just to be uh, better people, but Father, I pray that you'll help us to uh, be a better community and to show up for each other. We thank you and praise you now. Bless Whitney and all that she does, prosper her business and everything else she puts her hands to. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining me, Whitney. You have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you.